What's up, guys and girls? This is Brooke Hennon here from Breaking Down the Page, and I went ahead and picked up a copy of Old Man Logan. I'm going to be rereading. I have all the floppy issues. I read this while it came out. If I feel like there was delays in between the chapters. It's by Mark Millar and Steve McNiven, and I sat down to read, and I was like, you know what? I want to go ahead and just get some of my thoughts out of my brain before I read, and just introduce you guys to this book if you've never heard of it this is what the movie logan is based on or inspired by and steve mcniven's artwork i'm gonna pull up his wikipedia page is is i say like he's one of my favorite artists i, I would probably say like top 10 to 25 sorry steven i i can identify over like 100 to 150 artists by their line work <laughs> And that 10 to 25, we're talking about, like, less than a percentage difference of, like, favorites. But it's like, if I had to stack them on and give them one value, you could probably make top 10. Easily. Like, it, it, it'd be hard to decide. But I first came across his work on, here it says, Crossgen's Meridian. And I should have just pulled this up beforehand. See if we can actually get some of his covers for it. And so he, he took up was Josh Middleton, who was it says he um Yeah, Josh Middleton is who he took over for. Meridian is just a fun cross gen series. I was looking for my cross gen book. I have I don't see any of my cross gen trades. I read everything cross gen published at the time, and they were a small indie house Back in the early 2000s, lots of drama. As I understand it, kind of involving Mark Wade and other and other people, and just checks ended up not going out. More or less, they tried to do an in-house studio. Either way, and they had some big comic book names going there. But Meridian, it's about this girl. It's got superpowers, but like they're they're on like floating islands, and they have this like magic technology. Not a, not something I was expecting to read in my 20s when I was mostly in like to superheroes but just really it, you would almost say that crossgen's model of just different they have like magical books uh sherlock holmes type books it, it's what i find now going to read manga i go look at shonen jump here's all the different genres and a lot of them are kind of in shonen but the worlds are all different we got one piece with pirates ninjas with naruto soul reapers with bleach and every other series it feels like <laughs> it was shinigami death note all that stuff, and if you like Steve McNiven's work, definitely go read Meridian. I would start at the beginning with Josh Middleton's work, with I think it's Barbara Kessel. Either way, yeah, Barbara Kessel. Um, check out his work. Here's just some of the cover work. Pretty sure that's McNiven. That one might not be. I'd have to pull it. Uh, maybe. I don't think that is. No, that's Edward Chu. Oh, well. Sorry, I didn't have this prep for you. This is definitely McNiven. It says down here, but you look at this, the posture, the face, the hair, just the way he draws the hair is very distinct. And the fluidity, the curvature of stuff. See the, that with the hair. How it's kind of folding in on itself like a Mobius strip kind of folds. The pants, the gestures. I love it. Go check out that. After that, and I looked up the Wikipedia like uh, to make sure I had stuff correct. His Captain America work was terrific. He, I think that was with Mark Millar in, uh, I think it says 2011, working on, I don't, I read Ultimate Secret. That story is not the strongest story. Best I remember they're introducing Captain Marvel into the Ultimate Universe. Marvel Knights, that was fun. It was a Fantastic Four. And New Avengers was great with him. But, but Civil War. Civil War is probably that and Old Man Logan in the, the Captain America, I would say, are my favorite books that he's drawn. I haven't read The Death of Wolverine or The Return of Wolverine. I was kind of dropping out of comics after reading for 20, 25 years. I started with Uncanny 316 as my first comic. So, 
Go check out Stephen McNiven. Going into Old Man Logan, I'll, I'll tell you the highlights that I remember. Just So just a little bit of recall. So there's going to be some spoiler here. But it, and a lot of this, like, I remember the covers. And there's a lot of comics that I read. I could give you a breakdown of the whole storyline. Like the, the Kang stuff that came. Uh, Ant- I watched Ant-Man last week. The Kang storyline that Kurt Busiek did with Avengers roughly 39 through like 54. Favorite Avengers storyline. I, I could walk you through that. Some of the Thor stuff from that era. That has my favorite Thor moment in all of comics. <laughs> with him, Captain America, Firebird, and there's a few other people fighting radioactive zombies coming out of like a, a Russia-type Krablakistan, whatever, invasion. One of those things that Kang said would be coming. We're reading Old Man Logan. Been a big fan of Mark Millar. Uh, I read Ultimate's Ultimates and Ultimates 2 last six months. I need to just kind of do my thoughts on that. But going into Old Man Logan, I remember the spider jeep. The stuff that's on the cover. <laughs> the stuff that's on the cover. we got the spider jeep, the Hulk family, blind Hawkeye, Venom, uh, a Tyrannosaurus Rex with Venom. Uh, I did not remember. I had the necessarily the Red Skull wearing the Captain America suit. Remember, it has to do with he's trying to get the super soldier serum. and But a lot of these middle ones, like this cover, I was like, oh, I guess he's going up against Murloc people or something. Blind Hawkeye using a sword. I remember that. I remember, I can tell you this, I remember why he never popped his claws. I remember why he never did that. And I remember how the book ends. But other than that, I'm really curious about what happens in those middle chapters that's building up to the end because the ending is definitely worth the read to get there. The 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 destination is worth the journey. I'm not quite sure if the uh, if it's I wouldn't just justify the the journey per se. It, it's a fun story. Not knocking on Malar. It's fun. There's original ideas. He comes up with really kind of big concepts, but if it wasn't Wolverine, I don't know if I'd be, if it didn't have the Wolverine holding the story together, I don't know what to degree the story would hold up for myself. And I suppose that's a question that I can ask once I've finished rereading it. Because I read this when this came out, and this was 2000, what year was this? Oh, I, I remember reading the Avengers vs. X-Men stuff. Brand New Day. Oh, I remember Brand New Day. Oh, my gosh. Old Man Logan. It was 2008, yeah. So this was finishing around the time when I met my wife. So, yeah, I remember talking to her about it. We met in 2009, spring. But, yeah, uh, check out the book in general. It's going to be fun. And I will come back in a few days after I finish reading it, which might be today. And I have some other reviews coming out, stuff that I've been reading. Reread Sin City. Bendis' Daredevil, about 30 issues of that before I got distracted to something else. What else do I have over here? Like I said, The Ultimates. So, a lot of fun comics I just kind of want to chat about. What's my impression? How do I remember them? And what's it like coming back to read them? Are they worth rereading? Everything that I've reread has definitely been exciting. If not, I wouldn't have gone as far. And with the Daredevil, I was reading chunks of issues, like just several issues a day. And it's all my floppies, all the original floppies. And I think it starts around 27. I want to say 24 through 26 was where Daredevil, someone's accusing Daredevil of being... Uh, Matt Murdock being Daredevil, and he ends up having Spider-Man show up in a suit into the courtroom, dressed as Daredevil. And then it goes into a storyline where someone tells the FBI that Matt Murdock's Daredevil, and Bendis' entire run is Matt running from the FBI trying to hide that he's Daredevil. And I was just like, this is weird that we had this story first, but Bendis does just an awesome job. Uh, and that's during that series is where I realized, you know what? There's not really kung fu TV shows. At least not that I knew of. There was one that came out early 2000s on like FX or something. I don't remember the name of it. Where it was just kind of a kung fu show. But realize Daredevil, when it comes to genres, he's the kung fu comic book. 
He's the Kung Fu series. X-Men's a school. Fantastic Four is a family. The Avengers is a football team. And Daredevil is Kung Fu. And it's fun. The Punisher is just kind of judges from the Bible. That's how I think about it. He's just a judge going around. So yeah. This is... This is exciting. All right. Have an awesome day.